What's up guys? Welcome back to Real Simple Mushrooms where we try to simplify home mushroom cultivation. Uh, in our last video, we went over how to actually make your own DIY modified monotub. Uh, if you missed that video, check it out up there. It's got some good information. Today's video though, we're gonna get into actually spawning this tub. So we are gonna take some grain spawn and some substrate, put it in the tub. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the liners, um, how to clean the tubs, how to spawn them, how to mix it, uh, and how to set yourself up for success. Okay, before we jump in, let's quickly go over everything that you're gonna need. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need the mono tub that we made in our last video, uh, a trash bag to cut a liner from, uh, scissors, gloves, mask, uh, painter's tape, and then micropore tape, and then make sure, so you know it's micropore, it says it right on the inside of the uh, spool here. 75% isopropyl alcohol, your clean grain spawn, and obviously you're gonna need your substrate. We like to use uh, dino soil here at Real Simple Mushrooms. It's a great uh, manure-based substrate, great for these top fruiting species. Okay guys, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about uh, preparation. Okay, so at least 30 minutes before you start doing any kind of mushroom work, uh, it's always best to turn any kind of fans off, your heaters, your air conditioners, any ceiling fans, anything that might be circulating air. Make sure all your windows are shut. Uh, we wanna minimize airflow around our workspace because there's all this microscopic stuff floating around in the air that's just waiting to land in our tub and ruin our grow. So we wanna avoid as much of that as possible. So always turn all the fans off at least 30 minutes before you start working. Give all that stuff a chance to settle. Uh, and then we're going to take your 70% isopropyl alcohol. You're going to wipe down all your surfaces. You're going to clean inside the bin all the little nooks and crannies really good. You're going to wipe down all your grain bag. You know, mycelium is extremely resistant to contamination when it's fully colonized like it is in this bag right now. But we're going to be breaking this up, mixing it in this tub with substrate, then it's going to have to recolonize. During that period of recolonization, it's susceptible to contamination. So we wanna give it a fighting chance. We wanna make sure this is as clean as possible. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Make sure you've showered and that you've got clean clothes on. Uh, if you do all those things, you're gonna have a much better chance of success. All right, well, let's get all this stuff cleaned up and let's get to the action. Now just be sure that you clean all of your surfaces really well, you clean both sides of your liner, you clean inside and outside of the tub, and make sure you really clean your grain bag or grain jar thoroughly as we're going to be dumping this in. Okay, now that we've got the tub and the liner and everything clean, we're going to install the liner. And how I like to do this, I actually like to put it together on the outside of the tub first. Now once you have that together, just take it off, flip your tub over, put your liner right inside, just like that. So it's already in there. Sometimes I'll put a little piece of tape and just to hold it up while I spawn it. <clears throat> okay, so now we got our liner in. Everything here is clean. Let's get our soil. Now again, clean everything as good as you can, man. Always, always, always clean. Always be cleaning, A, B, C. All right. <clears throat> now for a 20 quart tub, I like to use two pounds of spawn and I like to use about four to five pounds of substrate. Two to one ratio is, is what I go for generally with these top fruiters. Um, I have the most luck with that. Some of them like one to one, but majority of them two to one I find to be the sweet spot for spawn to sub ratio. So two pounds of spawn, four pounds of soil roughly. And what we're gonna do here, I don't know if you can see this, let's check my view here. All right, now that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna 
open this up. And we're using Dino Soil from Tris Twisted Tree Farms. I love this stuff. It is a tortoise manure based substrate mix. I've been using it for years with really great success. And once you get your soil in there, your substrate in there, you want to make sure to break up any big chunks in there, All right? I don't really weigh this at this point because I, you know, pretty much got it all figured out. I can eyeball it. See big chunks like that? You just wanna make sure you break all that stuff up. You want the mycelium to be able to work through it easily. Any real dense chunks, it's gonna slow it down. So just make sure everything is nice and broken up. Okay, so we're gonna take our spawn now. Cut that up. Take this. Break. All right, now all of this here again, we're gonna break all of this up. Each one of these grains is like a little mycelium seed. It's an inoculation point. So your mycelium is gonna to start to spread out from each one of these colonized grains here. And also, when you open your bag, make sure you give it the sniff test. It should just smell like fresh mushrooms. If it smells sweet, if it smells sour, if it smells anything like other than like fresh mushrooms, you probably chuck it. It's probably bacterial or contaminated. Okay. Once you get all those broken up nicely, then go ahead and mix all the substrate and the spawn together really good. Make sure you get down in the edges and the corners. I'm gonna distribute this as evenly as possible um, throughout the tub here. Probably got a little bit more substrate in there. I like to end up with about a two and a half to three inch substrate, substrate depth in the tub. That works best for the top fruiters that I like to grow, personally. A little bit more. One of the reasons I love Dino Soil is because they do such a great job with it, man. It's always at perfect field capacity when I pick it up. Um, you know, it's never giving me any issues with contamination. And you know, don't be afraid of, of some of these manure-based substrates. Like my girlfriend would never let me grow if uh, my soil smelled like poop. So you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't smell bad. Actually, can't smell it at all. It just smells like fresh soil. Um, so once you have it in there, you really want to go around and press the sides down really tight. Um, the reason we do the liner is for side pins, right? Side pins are caused by a little microclimate in the gap between the tub wall and the cake. As the mycelium starts to absorb some of the moisture, the cake will shrink and pull away from the wall. And the reason we put the liner in there now is because the liner will actually shrink with the cake and it'll prevent that little microclimate from forming on the sides and it'll stop the, the pins. Okay, so once you have it all packed down nice and tight, mixed up really good, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little bit more and just put a light dusting over the top 
just covering some of those exposed grains, okay? And then give it a light little pat down after that. This isn't a true casing layer, this is just a top layer to cover the grains. Um, I will be playing with some casings soon because some, some new studies came out that were pretty interesting that showed how much a casing layer can affect your yield, almost double or triple it. So I'm going to play around with it. Probably be my next video actually, uh, I'm going to do a casing layer and do a comparison uh, between non-cased and cased. Okay, so that's how it should look now, right? It's nice and even. Make sure it's nice and level too. You want it, you want it level. Uh, like I said, you want the sides packed down nice and tight. Uh, and once you have it like this, now it's time to go in and just trim that liner out. All right, that was kind of a pain in the ass. But now that that's trimmed, go back in and just give it another repack. All right, looking good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our micropore tape now, okay? And we're gonna cover up our fresh air exchange holes with one layer of micropore tape. Um, if you're in a really, really dry area, you can start with two layers. Um, And I'll put links in the description for uh, all the stuff I use in this video. So I'm gonna put a layer of microport tape over every hole here. <clears throat> now there's a lot of debate about whether you seal the tub up until the substrate is colonized and then let it get fresh air, which in my testing, I've found that I get better pin sets when I do that, so how we do that now is take some painter's tape, right? And we're gonna cover that up and just seal those holes. Cause this is a non-porous tape, no air will escape through this. And it doesn't stick to a bunch of stuff, so it'll peel right off when you are ready to put it in fruiting conditions. So this is what I do here. And this will just make sure that the CO2 stays up. Because um, that's what gets us good pin sets. All right. <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Uh, now what we're gonna do is clean the lid really good, put the lid on and set this thing to colonize. <clears throat> Okay, so there we go. We're gonna put the lid on it and there you go. That is how you spawn uh, a mono tub. Now we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna let this colonize uh, and I'll check in with a, a couple updates uh, every, I don't know, maybe in about two weeks. I'll check back in and show you guys what it looks like, show you what good fruiting conditions look like on the surface and we'll get into a little bit more detail on the process from here, all right? Thanks again for joining, guys. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe, share. That definitely helps the channel. We're new here. Uh, I really do plan to, to put out a lot of good, good information, um, good content. And again, you know, we're just trying to simplify everything here. Uh, a lot of people overthink growing mushrooms and try too many things and I found the simplest texts usually work the best uh, and that's why they've been around forever. So with that, I will bid you guys adieu. Thanks for joining. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Take it easy. Peace.